I was kind of fortunate to have the upbringing um, in the industry like I did. Um, I grew up in Coomore. Uh, Dad was setting it up in the 70s uh, with Robert Sangster. And you know, we used to, um, when I was growing up around the breakfast table, usually coming home from Bally Doyle was, um, you'd have Robert Sangster, uh, my grandfather Vincent O'Brien, my father, you know, Lester Pickett, they'd be sitting around the table discussing uh, work that morning. We had Sadler's Wells covering mares out the back of the house. Um, you know, it was, uh, it was an exciting time and, you know, to be a part of that and to hear the stories around the table, you know, you, you don't forget that. And I suppose it was very hard to think of doing that and other than this when I grew up. When I started off, you know, as a kid, we started off um, take, taking, the, uh, taking the paint off the gate, repainting them, um, learning how to muck out stables. And, you know, we've had some, the one thing about Coolmore staff have been there a long time and a lot of the guys who are now managing a lot of the areas, I worked for them growing up and, uh, you know, started at the bottom and, you know, it was uh, just learning the ropes. Um, and I'm very fortunate the people that I worked with that are still here today. Um, you know, got to see all different parts. I got to, um, I was, I got to ride in for Aidan O'Brien. Um, Aidan O'Brien always said that the, the greatest day he ever had was the day that I retired uh, as an amateur jockey out of that yard. I left college in England uh, to come down here to do three months stint um, just to see what I thought of it. Um, my, my grandmother actually, uh, Vincent O'Brien's wife, is actually Australian so I grew up hearing a lot of stories about Australia so my grandmother obviously being Australian uh, I came down here and uh, I fell in love with it straight away. I mean I went to the races and the racing here is there's nowhere like it in the world. The excitement, the buzz that's in Australia, it's second to none. So it, be it became um, a realization very quickly for me that I was going to become home. You you've got a place where you can have amazing weather. Um, you know, you've got a place here where the grass grows, um, but also we, this farm is very special. Um, you've, you've seen it yourself. Uh, Coomore is special. The Hunter Valley for raising racehorses uh, is second to none. Um, you know, this, this farm has raised a lot of good horses, um, you know, Pride of Dubai, um, Fastnet Rock, uh, Vancouver, um, you know, there's a lot of good horses come off it. So listen, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't imagine um, anywhere better than this place. To be fair to Dane Hill, uh, Dane Hill built this farm. Um, you know, it started with John Massara and, uh, you know, what, what, what Dane Hill went on to, to build uh, for us, you know, now through his son, uh, in Fastnet Rock and even uh, globally for Coolmore, um, he, he, he definitely, he, he, was the, he was one of the main parts of building Coolmore um, through the years and, you know, very lucky to have had him and, you know, his sons and, you know, a lot of the mares now that you see on the pedigrees of the good horses, you know, they're coming down through Dane Hill, but as I said, he was an amazing, uh, he was one of the best sires I've ever seen in Australia. And uh, yeah, listen, this, uh, this farm was, was, was very lucky to have him. Well, when running a farm like this, um, the one thing Dad always said is it's about the um, staff that work there. Um, it's about them, uh, it's about their families, it's about you know, their children, it's about the whole, the whole legacy of the place. You know, we're, we're well aware that uh, the results that we've had uh, you know, on this farm and Coomore globally, that we wouldn't have it without the people that we've had working for us. Um, and the effort that they put in. So we've been, uh, we've been very fortunate with the staff that we've had and, you know, to be fair, we give them full credit for the results globally that we've had. We've been very fortunate and lucky um, to have seen a lot of good horses. Um, you know, we've had uh, Fastnet Rocks, Galileos, and, you know, here we've had So You Think. Um, but, you know, a horse like American Pharaoh, to see what he did, um, in America, in New York that day when he won the Triple Crown, I was fortunate enough to have been there. And when you have 150,000 people all cheering for one horse, it was pretty special. And when it obviously happened, it hadn't happened for nearly 40 years. It was probably the most electrifying uh, experience I've ever had in my life. I mean, walking around New York the next day, people coming up to you and saying, you know, did you see American Pharaoh yesterday? It was pretty special and you know to have to realize now that we have that horse standing here in the Hunter Valley is is pretty special so um, you know to have uh, a roster the way we do at the moment and um, we're very fortunate we've got two uh, two triple crown winners uh, standing at stud here we've got uh, golden slipper winners Cox 
plate winners, champion two-year-olds. You know, this is something that we've been uh, working to get towards for quite a long time. And in fairness to the team here, they've, they've been uh, working hard to, to get that. And um, as you said, there's some great names there, um, you know, and uh, the, you know, the Soya Thinks and the Pieros, you know, what they're doing on the track, it's exciting. And, you know, the quality of the mares, for example, that American Pharaoh's getting, um, you couldn't but be excited for the future.